Hi everyone, we're going to get you set up with SSH access to your Reclaim hosting account via Visual Studio Code. You're going to need to first start by being in your um, logged into your Reclaim hosting account in the client area because we're going to actually start by resetting the password to your um, server for your account. This is not your password to get access to Reclaim Hosting, but to the particular account you have running. I have a number of different ones that I'm going to be working on for this demo, this rescuethepresent.net. So within here, I'm going to change the password. All right. <clears throat> and it brings up this new password and confirm password. And you also want to note this is the username. So I'm going to actually copy this username. This is your actual username. And I'm going to put it in a text edit document. And then I'm not going to just use any password. I'm going to generate a strong password. So I'm going to get a password generator um, and use a very strong, the default settings are fine, and a very strong password. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it into my document, but I'm also going to put it into my password here. All right, I'm going to save this. And so now I have, I know for sure what my username and password is for this particular server, okay? With that set up, I now can go to the cPanel of that account. I'm going to rescue the present.net because that's the one I'm working on. And I can go into the security section and SSH access, all right? I'm gonna go to manage SSH keys and I'm going to generate a new key. I'm just going to actually use that same password, all right, and then generate a key, okay? And then I'm going to go back, and then with that key that was created, you can note it's not authorized, so I have to authorize it. So under Manage, I'm going to click Authorize. I'm going to go back, and now we're actually all set, okay? So we can go back to Reclaim Hosting, and we're going to look at the file manager, and we're going to look at public underscore, uh, or actually we'll leave it right here. So because this is where we're going to be looking at our server from Visual Studio Code, hopefully in just a moment. So let's move this over and we're going to show Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code, you need to have the extension installed called remote-ssh, all right? So this particular extension um, needs to be installed for this tutorial to work. Um, and also you need to be on a Mac. If there are issues via Windows, it has to do with Windows not being Linux based and that's uh, beyond me for this tutorial, beyond the scope of this tutorial. So once this is installed, we can go to the command palette, which on a Mac is command shift P, all right? And we can start writing, um, calls to remote SSH, remote SSH, and then colon open configuration file. This is what we want to do. I already have a couple, and then it's going to ask you to pick where to say uh, the, the config that you want. This is based on my pathway within this particular computer, the user, uh, Michael Smith, SSH config, all right? So I already have a couple configs for different accounts, and I'm going to create a new config, all right? I'm going to follow the pattern above. Yours will likely just be empty, and you can just fill in the ones. And I'm going to give the, the host can be named anything. So this one's going to be called Rescue the Present. All right. And the use keychain, which you don't necessarily need to have, this is to save passwords to your keychain manager on your computer. And then we'll say host name. This is the actual domain name of your account. So that's rescue the present.net, all right? That's my URL. And if you're like not remembering, you can always go back to the cPanel and you can look in the general information area, all right? And you'll remind you, there's your username and then there's your domain name. And if you're on full desktop, you would find that information at the top. I just happen to have a collapse. So it's user and then domain name, okay? So I'm going to pop this back over and then type my user, all right, which I can just copy and paste from my document here, copy, paste, all right. 
I'm going to save this, and now the config's available, so I can connect. So I can go back to the command palette, command shift P, and I can say um, connect connect current window to host. All right, so it's a remote dash ssh colon connect current window to host. All right. And it's listing all the different options that I have. I'm going to do rescue the present, all right? And then you can see it's asking you, do you want to continue? And just say yes, continue. And then once you've continued, you're going to need your password, all right? And I'm going to change this password on this tutorial. So I'll copy that, paste it in there, hit return. And the connection was made. And so you might be wondering, well, now what? Well, I'm going to go to this file manager back here just so we remember. We want to see the file manager. And if I go to the files and you click open folder, it's basically showing you look, you can see dot app data, dot cage, fs, all of these files and uh, folders match. And what's important to us is we want to look at, because this is where all our files are hosted that are available to the World Wide Web by URL is public underscore HTML. So I want to look in that folder, and now I'm starting to see all the files, all the files that are in here, all right? And so you can see there's a lot of different stuff here. So I'm going to start with here. I'm going to say, okay. And so now I can see all the files and directories in my server. And let's pretend I'm working on um, I, and so immediately I can, what I'm going to do is for this exercise, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to put, oops, I had this one selected. I don't want that one in there. Let's just go below so nothing is selected. And I'm going to say make a, make a new folder. We don't want you selected. Let's click away. All right. So I'm going to say make a new folder. I'm going to call it dev1. All right. I hit return. And now dev1 is here and you can see if I reload, you can see dev1 is now on my server, it's empty, okay? So I can select it, and let's say I was gonna put my problem sets and my tutorials in here, but let's, instead of seeing all these files now, I wanna see from the perspective of just dev. So I can open, say command O, and this time now it's, it's remembering where I left off, so I'm opening a folder, and I can type dev one, and I can hit return, and just like you're working in any project within Visual Studio Code, it shows you the perspective of that directory. All right, we always want to be working from a directory. We just happen to be working from a directory from our server. So I'm going to make two new directories in here. I'm going to call one problem sets, all right, and I'm going to make another one. <coughs> whoops. I'm going to make another one called uh, tutorials, right. And again, we can reload and you can see, oh, there are those directories that I've made. I can go back up one level, remember where it was, I made dev1, and now I made problem sets and tutorials from Visual Studio Code. And so I'm working from the server uh, point of view. And so what that's going to allow us to do is I can actually create files on the, within Visual Studio Code and they're automatically going to be pushed to the server. So if I actually made a file within problem sets and I say this would be a test.html, right? And I use, you know, HTML, and we can have this is a uh, test page, right? And we could say h and h1, and we have test page. And if I save this, okay, we can now see within problem sets we have test.html. So where is all this stuff? Well, remember, if I'm working with rescuethepresent.net and I go to dev1, I will see the server point of view, and there they are. So as remember, your domain name is like your public underscore HTML directory, right? Okay, so I'm just following the directory path to the files that I've loaded, and that's how it works Yes,
All right? And so I can go to problem sets and there's that test HTML file. So I've created this. So now if I add a paragraph and some lorem ipsum in there, right? And save it and then refresh the page, you can see what I'm using is literally this is on my server now. All right, so I'm working with the file on Visual Studio Code and it's uploaded to the server whenever I make a change to it. So let's say you have a whole bunch of problem set files that you want to transfer. And so I have those ready to transfer from my Web Dev 1 class, right? And I need to look at all of the problem sets, all right? So I'm actually going to I'm going to delete this file. We don't need that. Okay. So we'll delete that file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these problem sets. Um, well, actually, we'll just do one at a time. I'm going to take a directory. And I'm going to just grab it and put it on the problem set and copy that folder. All right. And you can see that one's there. And I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to make sure I hover on problem set not the whole thing here. So problem set, and I copy that over. And now as I open it, you can see there's two folders in here, all right? So I'll add the remaining four that I should have done, and I'm gonna put these up there. And it'll take a little bit longer, but they'll all add 11, 12, 13, all right? And you can also note, if I go back to the point of view of the file manager and the cPanel, you'll see all that stuff. It's all on my server, all right? And I can also look at it from the browser. So if I go to problem sets now, and I want to look at, um, say, the object problem set, or more interesting, we'll look at the, no, not this one. These are it's visual. Um, oh, and these are tutorials. These aren't the problem sets. So, oh, let's see what we can do about that. So I put them in the wrong spot. These are the tutorials, all right? So let's grab them all and move them to tutorials. So I'll just select them all. I use the shift key. So I clicked one. You can see it highlighted. I hold down the shift key, and I click all the, uh, the last one. I have them all selected, and I can move them to tutorials. It says, hey, do you want to move all these? You bet. So I move them all. All right, and so that's where those belong. So let's go back and I'll get the problem sets that belong in the problem set area. Oh, actually, those were problems. Whoops. So let's put those back. I don't know what I was thinking. Put those back. There we go. See? If you make mistakes, you make fixes. It's the tutorial, so let's put these up. All right. And now I have all of my pieces of what should be done to date uploaded to my server. And I'm going to show you how, once this is done, we can edit something too. So remembering everything that you're working on is, so we have our <coughs> scorekeeper file, right? And we'll go back to the server refresh this, we go to the problem sets, whoops, we don't want to go to problem sets, we'll go to tutorials, we'll look at advanced DOM manipulation, and we'll look at scorekeeper, right? And so it says playing to five, and this is player two. Once we go up to five, it stops, right? So we could, let's say, change in the HTML, playing the game to, and we refresh, all right? And you can see it's here. And also the same is for true for your um, for your JavaScript file. So I can change the max score. This isn't going to change the display, but if I set this to uh, 10, all right, it's not pulling that to change the display number right now. Uh, that's controlled by here. If I refresh this and I go, it's going to go all the way up past six because at 10 I reset it so I made a change in my JavaScript and it was reflected in and again this is all live on the server okay so get your stuff up hopefully you'll get connected via SSH and um, let's see how it goes